Hey guys, so today I'm going to share a little bit of an embarrassing story. I mean, most of you do know that I am the most unlikeliest person to ever become an entrepreneur. And I kind of got myself into a bit of a conundrum. I wanted to take a shortcut. I mean, who doesn't want to take the shortcuts in life? For people on YouTube, it always seems to work out, but when I try it myself, things just go wrong. So let's just get straight into it. I'm going to give you guys the down low on my biggest, most latest entrepreneurial screw up, which I'm sure will give you some laughs. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Roshani, and if you are new here, this channel is all about building the life you want to live, building life by your design. And we talk about things from personal finance all the way through to entrepreneurship. And you don't have to be some kick-ass Fortune 500 person to want to learn about entrepreneurship. I think most entrepreneurs come at it from really wanting to build uh, economic stability and more multiple streams of income, especially nowadays with all that's going on in the world. So that leads me right into today's video. Guys, I hired a ghostwriter. Now, if you have been kicking around the block with me for a while, you know that I love writing. Probably for eight years now, I have been actively writing. I have a blog. I used to do a newsletter back in the day, and I have been talking about writing a book for just over a decade. It's on the bucket list, and it never really clued into me until this year that writing could be a very lucrative passive income for me and for my family. And I really began to look into this when my husband and I, we incorporated our Amazon business back in May, 2020. So when we started to dive into the world of Amazon, we realized, wow, they do, you know, Amazon FBA. You don't even have to worry about shipping any of your products, but they also have Kindle. They've got so many different platforms through which you can sell. And so when I thought of this idea of Amazon Kindle, what really appealed to me was first, you only need to have one product and go through the effort of creating that product just once. And then you upload it to, to the platform and you set your price and hopefully it sells. I mean, if you've done your um, market research and picked a really good niche topic, then you should get some momentum and then you can really begin to earn passive income. Now, the other cool thing about eBooks on Amazon Kindle is that they allow for anybody to publish. I mean, I think the shortest book is 2,500 words. So you can write a 10 page book and still publish it on Amazon Kindle. Now, I'm not like, you know, a Stephen King or a Francine Rivers or any of those big authors. Like my book is going to be maybe 30 to 60 pages. And I wanted to sell it around the price point of $2.99 up to $5.99 thinking that, wow, if I were to get maybe $300 a month from this, or even up to a thousand dollars a month of passive income, just from the sale of my ebook, that would be awesome. And if it's successful, then because of the platform through Amazon, it's scalable. You can take that one product, convert it into an audiobook. You can also sell it as a paperback book and Amazon does all the work. I mean, if somebody orders your book as a paperback, they print it in house and they ship it in house, everything. All you have to do is provide the front and back cover designs. So this is what really just got the cog wheels going in my brain. And I thought, this is awesome. I'm going to do it. So here's what happened. <laughs> I don't have time to write a book. I work full time and I run this side hustle business with my husband through Amazon. We're running a production company for him. I have two boys, which are both under three years of age. And, you know, just trying to keep too many things, too many balls juggling in the air. So when am I ever going to find time to write a book? And even if it's just 60 pages, it's the creative energy that goes into producing something that's high quality that I just don't have the energy to do right now. 
even though I love writing. I'm an author at heart, you know, I truly, truly do love writing, but I just don't have it in me right now. So I thought to myself, I'm going to hire a ghostwriter. That's what all big time writers do. That's what pretty much everyone on Amazon Kindle is doing. I mean, they are hiring it out. So how did I get the ball rolling? Well, first I decided I was going to try and uh, throw some work towards my to my mom. <laughs> um, instead of her having TV time at night, I asked her if she would want to be my ghostwriter, thinking, you know, she could do a good job. She used to edit my essays in university and, you know, she's she's a pretty good writer herself. So I, you know, we set up a Google Doc together and I gave her the outline of the book that I wanted to write. And my mom produced about two chapters of uh, I don't want to say garbage, but you know, it was just like fluffy, just ideas. You could tell that the topic of the book, which is entrepreneurship, isn't anything that she's passionate about because it ended up just going down a whole other uh, route. Uh, like it didn't even follow the order. So then I found myself in this awkward position because I had to fire my mom. Ugh. Sat her down and said, hey mom, uh, I'm firing you. <laughs> she took it well. <laughs> she says, yes, I don't think I'm the right person to write your book. So then I was like, oh crap, now I'm going to have to actually, you know, uh, spend money to hire a ghostwriter. And you guys are just thinking, you know, oh my goodness, she's a cheapskate. Like just write it in the comments. Rosh, you're such a cheapskate. Okay. A girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. I'm trying to build a business from zero. Okay. Um, don't have a lot of extra cash floating around right now and millennial trying to save for a home, got young kids. Like we're trying to start this Kindle business with as little as possible to mitigate our risks. To be honest, it's an experiment of sorts. So I thought, okay, what am I willing to invest in this? Maybe up to like $500 for a ghostwriter because thinking, okay, this, the ROI will pay off. Hopefully within a couple of months, I'll have recouped back the $500. So I got this company called Composely and I set up a call with their marketing person and got quotes from them and whoo, oh man, you already know what the answer was. So their minimum starting base rate was $2,000 and yep, can't afford that right now. Like that's a car. <laughs> so I knew, okay, I can't go the route of hiring a professional like ghostwriting company to do this for me. Maybe when I'm, you know, a little bit well off, more established. All right. So my next plan of action, plan B was to hire a ghostwriter through Fiverr.com. Uh, Fiverr, I'll spell it out here for you below. <laughs> Anyways, so I hired this ghostwriter and he is this Nigerian guy and he had like 4.9 star reviews out of five. And I actually sent him my book outline and I asked for a sample chapter just to kind of test his skills to make sure that he was legit, like he could actually write English and he could you know, work with me on this. So he charged uh, $36 for the sample chapter, which was about seven pages. He gave me back the sample chapter and you know, there were some errors in it and everything, but it was workable. It was decent. And I thought, okay, this is great. Like I found someone and potentially like we could build a long lasting business relationship. He could write all my eBooks for me if this goes well. Anyways. So uh, yeah, I paid, you have to pay up front on Fiverr and I paid $230 and he had a full month to be able to write the book for me. So closing in on the first deadline, I get this message from him saying that he's been in the hospital and that he is unable to meet the deadline. Mm. So, you know, right away, this red flag went off and I, uh, wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. So I, you know, messaged him back and said, I hope you're feeling better. You know, it happens. All right, let's extend this by 10 days. And he said, that's awesome. I can get it to you by then. So he got an extension. Then, you know, the deadline comes and I haven't got my book yet. And I write him, I'm like, what's going on? He says, oh, um, you know, I'm sorry. My best friend died from kidney disease 
and I, you know, can try and have the book to in 48 hours. So another red flag went off, you know, that's huge. And here's the thing, like, I look like a jackass if I say to him, did your friend really die of kidney disease? To be like, truth be told, like, okay, what do you think? I mean, do you think his friend died of kidney disease? Or do you think he was just like working me? Let me know in the comments below. I'm going to get a kick out of your answers, guys. So I, you know, again, I, I tried to be a good person. I was like, you know, okay, I will give you 48 hours, but like I'm expecting a good quality book and, you know, I just <laughs> come through, come through on your end, buddy. So 48 hours later, he sent me through the final product and it was a piece of garbage. This man totally oversold his English skills. It was so bad and it was so obvious that it was plagiarized. There were just parts talking about like, you know, like Bob and Shane on their Hawaiian vacation. I'm like, this book's supposed to be about me. Who's Bob and Shane? Or um, about this person who's running a blog enterprise. I'm like, what? Like, what do you mean? Like, it, it was just very clearly like pieced together from all over the internet to give me this book. So I called him out on it and, you know, I said, you know, this isn't what I hired you for. This is, you know, totally different than the sample chapter that you gave me. I, I want a refund. I'm sorry. I even thought through the process of what it would be like to go and give him time to do revisions, but really he oversold his English skills so much that I thought, you know, for me to put in the effort of leaving all of the editing and comments and revisions that I need and to probably not even still get those revisions on point, it's just not worth it. I might as well just write the book myself, you know. So I asked for a refund and for the entire book about, you know, about 15% of it was salvageable and I decided, okay, like because of my conscience, I just couldn't you know, ask for the full refund. I thought, you know, he did put in some effort to play drives this at least, like, so I will pay you for the 15%. And I ended up paying him like $62 American. He didn't deserve that because of the way he, you know, he kind of worked me and everything, but I just, I'd rather be at peace with myself that I paid him for the portion that I will take and use in the future. But yeah, it was pretty much a flop, guys. This like experiment to use a ghostwriter. So yeah, I fired my mom. Then I fired my Nigerian ghostwriter. And then I, you know, cried and boohooed about it to my husband and decided I'm going to take it on myself and write this ebook. Now, it's two months later and I'm here making a video to tell you that I've really only gotten to like page 10 <laughs> because again, I come back to this um, problem where I work full time. Like I'm up at five in the morning with my boys. I go to work at eight. I get home by four and then I'm with them till 730. And by the time they're in bed, then I work for my corporation until like 11 PM at night. When am I going to find time to write this book? It just, it doesn't fit in my life right now. So I have decided to hire another ghost writer. I am using a platform to hire through the Philippines and I will let you guys know how it goes. But there are just a couple things that I wanted to touch on, you know, before signing off here. I think first I want to encourage any entrepreneur that it is well worth it to take the risk of like 200 and 50 bucks to try and invest into an idea, even if it's a total flop. So yeah, my idea to have a ghostwriter, it didn't work out, but Look at it this way. If you were to buy an amazing, amazing car for $10,000, everyone would congratulate you like, wow, you bought a new car. It's awesome. It's beautiful. This is incredible. But a car is a depreciating asset. The moment you buy it, it goes down and down and down and down and down in value. Yet, if I were to say to you, guys, I took $10,000 and I'm investing it into my business, my Amazon business to try and start an Amazon Kindle thing and to make income through book revenue and all these different book streams that Amazon provides. 
you know, a lot of people come back at you with a lot of skepticism. Oh, you're going to invest that much money into this idea? Like, what if it doesn't work? I would much rather invest money into an idea that could turn into something incredibly profitable and like I get tons of learning experience along the way than to invest it into, you know, buying new clothes or, you know, buying something that's just going to depreciate in value. So it, it all comes down to how you look at money. And if you're looking at it as an entrepreneur, then you're looking at it and you're seeing opportunity, which is what I'm really seeing with the money that I'm going to invest in a ghostwriter to produce this book. So that was kind of my first learning, you know, to continue investing, even if it flops. And then second is to be successful. Like, yes, you need to have a quality book. It can be short, but it has to be quality because people leave reviews and social proof. It's the end game for Amazon. Like if you have crappy social proof on Amazon, no one's going to buy your book and and no one's going to buy your product. So if you don't put out quality, you're really shooting yourself in the foot. The other thing is that the other idea to have in, in mind is that with an ebook, once you do produce it, you can make revisions and update it and make it better and better with time as you have more time. So that's going to kind of be my game plan. As I go at this uh, another time, we're going to see what happens and I will keep you guys posted. And yeah, I, I mean, I hope this inspires you to follow your own little creative ideas. Definitely share them with me in the comments below. And if you are an unlikely entrepreneur just like me, then welcome to the channel and be sure to subscribe before you go. I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao.